Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Grittiest Take. We're here after a nice Flyers 2-1 to one victory as they look to what win their first series since the playoff series since 2012. So hopefully we get to experience that in the seven-game series first round after the round robin. But obviously a tremendous game there. 2-1 victory for the Flyers. First off, though, before we break it down, how you doing today, Joe? Doing well, doing well. The Flyers got the win. We saw a lot of good hockey today. I was getting a little nervous when that one game was in overtime. But <laughs> luckily, the Islanders went, don't worry, guys. We're going to win in regulation and save the day. So uh, thank you, New York. I said it on Twitter. Thank you again, the Islanders. So that's the one thank you you get from me. You don't get them often. Um, but thank you. So <laughs> that got us to have our game tonight rather than at 11 a.m. or something like that. So, yeah, it it was great to get our game in tonight. But how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Very good win there. Obviously, Philly needs it because everything else is a mess in, in the sports world. So very good to get this Flyers victory. Excited to talk about it. And, yeah. you know, could, I was could also, be doing better. Yeah, I was also going to say since I'm so absent-minded with those things and I said we should start doing it, Whoever likes what they're listening to and stuff, please comment whatever you want us to talk about and subscribe. And that's just because I'm an idiot and don't remember to do that all the time. So now hopefully <laughs> I, I will. So please, if you want to comment, we like interacting with you on stuff. So and subscribe and all that. So Absolutely. Um, echo everything you just said. I always look and interact. Always enjoy the comments and get us going on our feet for the next stuff to, to talk about in the next game. Um, but no, first off, I mean, why don't you just give us your thoughts on the overall game? And obviously, we all know what they did in the, in the round robin going 3-0. and You look to get, get that opening win, and you obviously get the job done. So obviously, you do what you have to take to get what you want in the end goal in this game. But overall, what was your thoughts for that opening game? Yeah, this game was so weird because the first period, we destroyed them. It was like 11-5 to five in shots. It wasn't even close. We destroyed them in possession. The second period, they destroyed us in possession. It wasn't even close. But we won the scoreboard. Um, That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and they also destroyed us in shots. It ended up being, I believe it became 18-7 to seven when I looked it up somewhere else for the second because score – they still have it wrong on the one thing, but either way, it was 17 to seven or 18 to seven. They still heavily outshot us in the second, um, then 13 to six in the third. So it was like, we won two of the periods. They looked good. Uh, where hard had to make a couple saves when you get that rush of adrenaline, like that rush in the last few minutes of the game that every team tends to get. Um, but overall, I liked how we looked for two periods. I really did not like how we looked in the second period. <laughs> so, but, uh, it's uh, something that to build on because this team always finds ways to win this year, and that's the thing they've been able to do more so with this staff than we saw with the previous coaching staff. Uh, they just usually find a way and never have a back-to-back -back horrific periods. And uh, that's kind of what I said when I did the one Instagram Live that I know some people like Kev will listen to this too. So thanks for commenting on that, buddy. Uh, but uh, we, um, it's... It was a tale of, like, cities, this game. That's what it was. It was two great periods. And we also dominated the face-off dot and stuff. But I just think it's something to build on for the Flyers. I think winning this game is a momentum builder for them because they know they really had Carter Hart be the reason they were able to bounce back in the third and have Fairby get that goal right away I mean that's fantastic to see we have two youngsters that immediately answered plays in the round robin you had it with Myers and now in this round in the first round with the Canadians you have an immediate answer by Joel Fairby who's obviously another youngster so yeah no absolutely right and like you mentioned like it was just such an odd game because because the way that second period is, you're lucky to come out of that. First off, obviously, as you mentioned, it was a quick goal, but you'd be lucky to come out of that with a tie game because of how, how much it seemed like the Canadians took over that period. It looked like yeah. you would have been honestly trailing after that one. But credit to Farabee for getting that quick goal. Uh, for those who don't know, maybe didn't get a chance to watch the game, Provorov Pro scored the first goal for the Flyers uh, in the first period to give them a one nothing lead. Uh, Shea Weber on the Canadians evens the score in the second period on a power play, which uh, why don't we break down that goal real quick by Weber? Because um, obviously special teams is a big thing. Obviously I'd expect them to survive in this series, but going forward it's going to be a key role. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm asking the question. I thought overall they actually kind of killed the, tried to kill that penalty fairly well. It just looked like 
they got a mix up maybe communication wise in front of the net, which allowed Hart to kind of get blocked there, allowing Weber to even the score there. But overall, I thought the power play killing part was actually not that bad. Yeah, our penalty kills look pretty good since we came back. Our power play has been the thing that's been struggling a little bit. Uh, not a little bit, a good amount other than the goal we scored tonight. Uh, so our PKs look good. I think that was also a play kind of just bounced out to Weber. Like JJ said, there was no chance Carter Hart was saving that. You would have had to be Dominic Hasek times two to save that. <laughs> like, like, like that wasn't getting saved. So. That he played a hell of a game too, and he's a big reason we won. He dominated that second period. Um, so I was very happy to see the first actual playoff, like in the actual, like regular postseason now, game by heart, have a very good game. Yeah, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Because you mentioned this being the actual first playoff game or whatever. I thought that was kind of weird that they counted the round robin as playoff stats, but I guess you don't really have a choice. But it just feels weird that they that, that counts. Yeah. No, that is a good point. But I was going to say another big thing in this game, G actually struggled for the first time in like forever. And the faceoff died at only 44.4. So he's probably going to immediately have like a 70% faceoff next game for being pissed off at that. Uh, <laughs> but well, Grant had a 62 and a half. Thompson had a 71.4 and 64.3 and 50. For, for 64.3 was for Coots and 50 for Hayes. So the other guys answered the bell. That's why this team is so dangerous, too, because when you can win the faceoffs, you're going to be able to get rid of the puck, but also it helps you with your possession numbers and all that. But another guy is Myers. I mean, Myers stepped up time and time again in this game, playing almost 20 minutes, made that diving, sliding play. I guess that's just what he's trying to – maybe he worked with Niski on that because he's made that play over the course of his career, but hopefully that's something he can master, too, because that's a – play that not many defensemen are able to make because like they said in the telecast normally you're going to hit the body or you're going to just completely miss the puck and look like an idiot so be being able to do that and make that play a couple times this season that's huge for a young defenseman and i'm not surprised because myers does not look like a young defenseman all season he's looked like a experienced defenseman so yeah, absolutely, and you bring up a good point with the faceoffs and everything. Yeah, and you mentioned Drew kind of struggled in that sense, but overall, Flyers won the faceoff score through thirty-two to twenty-seven, fifty-four percent, something they've been excellent all year on, and that kind of leads to the Farabee uh, goal. I mean, obviously, exactly. you, you you win the faceoff there. So why don't you talk about how important it is for the Flyers to continue that this year, and, and then also, I, I, I'll, let's stick with that first, and then we'll, I'll ask you my next part. But like just. I want you to talk about how important it's been for the Flyers to win that faceoff, uh, not only tonight, but just overall in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's been very important because the Flyers have been a team that have good net front presence. So if you win a faceoff, you can just get a goal quickly right away, kind of like Joel did there where he had one, a nice deflection that then Price just saved with his pad. And because he deflected it, Price was completely out of position. So once he got the rebound, he got an easy goal. But that was a very nice play by Fair because he deflected it, then reacted, then put it in. So, I mean, I think winning those faceoffs is huge, and it just gives you a big benefit with your team. It's obviously not as big as winning in terms of, like, the shooting numbers and the possession numbers, but uh, winning faceoffs is definitely a big thing because if you're not winning in a period in some of those that can kind of help you a little bit if you're not winning the possession numbers and shooting numbers because the more faceoffs you win, the more likely you're going to be able to get the puck out of your zone if you have to do that. So, Man, And on the Fairby goal, it's one where I forget who it was. I don't know if you remember, but kind of just dumps it into the Flyers or in the Canadian zone there, uh, forces Price out of the net. Um, sorry, excuse me. Forces him out of the net there to... Um, kind of chase down that puck and he tries to clear it uh and then a great job by the flyers to keep it in the zone there and then eventually lead to that goal as like you mentioned Farabee deflects it uh, and then eventually stays with it on the rebound and scores it and just credit to the flyers for staying with it because you caught price out of out of position there really and, and that's that, exactly, that's just what yeah. went so big there in that spot to get that quick answer and when we say quick answer i don't think we mentioned it yet here but it was 16 seconds later so like very quick and you didn't let I think the other big thing, and maybe you want to touch on it, but the other big thing to get that quick response is you don't let the Canadians build any momentum after that goal. Yeah, that was the big thing because, like, we kind of touched on earlier, we did not look good in the second period. So once they got their goal, 
that kind of stifled them a little bit because we were able to answer in 16 seconds, as you said. Otherwise, it would have been probably a little bit different uh, energy-wise going into that third period. And I think having that happen when they know they outplayed us in that second, that has to be a little deflating. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's and that's something you really need to control in a, in a playoff like this without any fans. Like, you can't have, oh, I mean, obviously, when whoever's home, but you can't have, oh, the Flyers fans back them up and kind of get find rhythm from that because, obviously, you see in other sports, too, it's lacking. I mean, you just don't have it uh, with the playoffs not being here, or playoffs, the uh, fans not being there. So you need to do something in any way you can. And here for the Flyers, it's the young guys stepping up, creating that extra energy, creating the extra momentum there. And, I mean, obviously, you're rallying behind a very young goalie. And here you have Farabee score the win, end up being the winning goal tonight. And I believe that's his second since the restart, second goal of the restart. Uh, um, yeah, I believe that is now his second of the restart. Yeah, it is. Yes. So that's two and four games. Obviously, a very good number there. Uh, I think Giroux and Konechny uh, assisted on the uh, Provorov goal. So very good to see there. And I think Sandheim assisted on the uh, Farabee goal. So a lot of different um, different people helping out there, getting the points. And I think I, mean, I think that's what's going to help carry this team so far, possibly, especially in this series, is just having so much depth. And you're not relying on one guy rather than everyone else stepping up. It just creates so many weapons yeah. for other teams trying to stop. I agree. I completely agree. I think another guy that did sneaky good tonight, though, was um, obviously plays up on our top defensive pair. But was Niskanen, because Niskanen blocked four shots on the night and looked good on defense. He might have not been flashy in the offensive zone tonight, but, I mean, he looked really good on the defensive end, blocked those shots for us. Some of those could have easily went in. Cooch was very physical, having five hits tonight. Um, so, And he also had four shots on goal, was aggressive, pulling the trigger. Same with Provy. I mean, I think those guys have continued to look good. Ghosts looked like a combination of like really solid and then like off for like one or two shifts. But overall, I think he still looked good. So it's going to be deciding what they decide to do there because AV Jedi mind tricked them and had both guys go out for warm ups. And then it was like, OK, now <laughs> I decided who's playing. Um, that's what we got to do. It's what we so, gotta do. yeah. Uh, so that's actually a really good strategy. That's why I wanted to bring that up. He. He does that, and I think that's why we haven't played our net front presence until game one. If we, I don't know if you noticed that, but in the round robin, we played a much more skilled passing Bruins-Tampa Bay-esque game. Um, I think that was on purpose, to be incognito. AV did not want to show a lot of our cards, and then he showed some of them tonight. I don't even think we showed all of them, because obviously we had a very struggle in second, so that would eliminate you from showing everything anyway. And uh, then we were able to have a key goal by Fairby at the end of the second. And just build on that. But you're right. Depth Grant was huge this game. I mean, the dude, uh, the dude was actually productive. He was productive on the ice, I think. Um, Thompson had a pretty solid game. He had a couple giveaways, I think, that kind of brought his game down. But Knack, Knack is the guy that I always bring up because I just love the dude. Uh, he just keeps getting better and better. Uh, Nicholas Albe Kubel, he's great on the four check. He also completely rocked. Um, I can't remember who it was, but uh, he completely rocked somebody tonight and then proceeded to have another hit on the same shift. Like, he was flying around like a heat-seeking missile, and that's just what he does, but also doesn't take bad penalties. So he's just a great, been a great player in addition ever since his call-up. And obviously it was encouraging to see uh, Voracek in the lineup and also play a good amount of minutes. And he even said he's not injured when uh, they had the press conference. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of Jake's personality. If he knows he's not injured, he's just going to tell you how it is. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, though, you got to take that you gotta take that with a grain of salt because a lot of guys say they're not injured, but we know they're battling through something. But, no, it was great to see him get back out there today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Jake's probably someone – well, he might be uh, felt something, but if he's not actually injured, he's probably going to tell you because he's normally someone that s says it as it is. He's going to be like, no, this isn't an issue. Or he's going to be like, yeah, this could be – like, he's not normally someone that's going to BS around the bush or anything like that. Yeah. Well, I, I, overall, obviously, great game by Carter Hart. Perfect on even strength, 25 for 25. Gave up the power play goal, as we met – or. Yeah, uh, yeah power, power play, play goal, goal, as we mentioned. Uh, two for three on that end. 
So obviously 27 and uh, 28 overall for a save percentage of 964. Obviously a fantastic night. Uh, I think he'd obviously be one of your one of the three stars of the night. But um, mm-hmm. why don't you give us who your three stars are? But also I want to add another question outside of obviously Carter Hart and maybe if you want to go somewhere else besides those three stars, who impressed you the most tonight as well? Um. Okay, Outside I'll go of Carter Hart because obviously that. Yeah, easy. obviously Carter Hart would be an easy one. Um, I would go with impressing. I guess would probably just be the con- well, probably fair because he just continues to impress. He continues to get better, and in the playoffs, you expect somebody to finally hit a snag uh, when they're a youngster, especially a youngster that didn't wasn't up all year. He went up, down, and then came back up. So, um. It, it was nice to see him after playing a good handful of 52 games, well, a large handful of 52 games, and looking really good because he's a 200-foot player. So he's a guy that if he's going confident, and he's good to have in the playoffs. Him continuing to impress, uh, it could be an easily like a coming-out party for Fairby. And I know Jamie was calling that a little bit with his, this being kind of a second season with another camp. So, uh, yeah, it seems like this could be the coming-out party for fair B and then the, the other guys, since this would probably be a little bit more of the surprised uh, factor is I just continue to love us uh, since he's come in here. I mean, it's not a surprise to many, but to more of the casual fan that maybe started paying attention more during the playoffs and uh, Derek Grant Grant's just been a great player since he's came here. Um, and he's just gotten better and better. He didn't look flashy today, but he was great in the face-off circle. He also had a couple, no, one shot on goal I wrote down, and then he also had two hits, so he's obviously a physical player and also had a block. He's just a guy that's able to kind of possess um, when he's on the line. He seems to kind of possess that line and have control of that line and help everybody out, and I think that's really why we've seen JVR and guys, whoever slotted down their knack usually, but whoever else it is, sometimes Pitlick moves up, just look really good because he's a good center that quarterbacks his line so well, too. So. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I know you mentioned he had a couple couple uh, miscues tonight, but I like Nate Tom- I like Thompson. I, I don't know what it is about him, but I like the way he plays. Um, overall, I didn't think he played that bad tonight. A, no, I didn't think it, he played bad. He just had like two. Yeah, th- people were just oversold it and went nuts, and I'm like, hey, it's not too bad of a deal. <laughs> yeah. He had three shots on goal, a hit. He is a I don't I didn't say how many um faceoffs overall he had, but a faceoff percentage of 71. So obviously that's pretty good in, in that spot there. Um, yeah, because he actually didn't have a turnover. It was more people just felt. I remember when reading something in a fan group and on that sport talk thing that he was out of position at times because he didn't have a registered mm-hmm. turn. But, but I, I always don't like that argument because in order to know somebody's out of position, you have to probably really know how someone's supposed to be positioned. Like, like it's kind of like if you're saying, Oh, well this so line was slanted too much this way. It's like, well, do you know that much about football? No. It's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so it's kind of like, that's kind of why I don't always believe in the whole, oh, he's out of position argument because that it has to be somebody that's not just a fan that watches the game for love and watching the game. It has to be someone that pays attention to those things too. Yeah, no, I agree with that. My, my last guy is, and I mentioned on the broadcast a couple of times, and obviously I'm going to defend him. I do like him. He's one of my, he probably is my favorite player on the team. That's Shane Goss' I thought, obviously he deserves a lot of the backlash he's been getting throughout the season, but I thought overall tonight he played well. Two shots on goal, a hit, uh, two blocks there. So, I mean, overall, I thought he took advantage of that. That's what he's got. doing a lot more of, sacrificing. Mm-hmm. I noticed since he's coming back, he's sacrificing his body a lot more. So, and he had two knee injuries. You want to think a guy with two <laughs> knee injuries. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Um, but, no, that I thought that those were kind of a couple guys that, again, not the best games for him, but a good, solid bounce back there for guys to spare yeah. getting that spot start. Um, then I, I think those guys are going to continue to come yeah. around, but I don't know. Yeah, what, I don't know if you have any final thoughts on tonight. I was just going to say, imagine our defense if Ghost continues to progress back from his knee injury. You still have Hag, you have Zamula, you have other guys that are right knocking on the door. So, I mean, like <laughs> our defense is just going to be where it's, you're going to have too many people. It's going to be like the Dodgers outfield from years ago, where it's just like oh, we don't need all these people. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so like. 
like that, that's just going to be a great luxury to have. I love seeing Goes continue to um, come back and do well. It's amazing. I saw Jamie treated this too. If people don't follow Jamie Baskell, you're making a large mistake. So do that. Um, but he tweeted that Ghost um, people didn't want him to play in the lineup at all a couple months ago. Now everyone wanted him to play over Robert Hag. <laughs> I was one of the people that actually said I thought in this series it would have made sense to play Hag because of physicality, and we saw we got beat in that department tonight. Um, other certain guys had hits, but I'm talking about as a whole. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then so I was a little surprised he got the nod for a start, but he looked really solid again, and I think it's because of how good he's looked. He's looked quick on his feet. And A.V., it's a myth that he never liked Ghost because he's always put him on the power play when he's in, even when he struggled on defense before the knee surgery. So, I mean, it's he just got frustrated with Ghost, I think, but he never disliked him. You wouldn't put a guy on the power play that you don't like. So, Exactly. I don't, I don't get yeah. that sense at all. I, I feel like A.V., he's just a coach that, I mean, he's been around the game for a while. He knows what he's doing, so he's going to go out and put the best lineup. I, don't, I think he's a guy that he doesn't play any favorites. He, he he plays guys that, I mean, exactly. he's in best team, best lineup that goes out and wins. I mean, especially at this point in the se- season, he's. I don't get that sense from him at all that he's playing favorites. They're gonna play someone here and there. Uh, I think he's all about business. He knows what the city wants. He knows how long it's been. Um, he's a fantastic hockey guy as well, and I mean, he's gonna go out and do what he has to do. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Yeah, Av knows exactly when to push the right buttons. Um. And, pu- and put guys in certain spots. And like I said, we know that they had to get on the guys and really motivate them in between the second and third because we know with this coaching staff, that wasn't probably a pleasant <laughs> locker room in between the second and third period oh, after no. that se- second period. So, I mean, they came out firing in the third period. We got the two-to-one win. It's a great start. It was a tale of three cities game. Great first. Uh, that's a new saying, I guess. <laughs> sloppy second first for everything yeah and then a good third again and i think this is great to build on and it's great to see carter hart have his first actual round of 16 <laughs> playoff win after having a great round robin so that was really my final thoughts i don't really have any more to say i just agree that it was a great game to start can't wait for the next one uh, i mean it's friday at three o'clock for people that don't know but for people that like this video, please click the bell and subscribe. And, Andrew, what's your final thought, buddy? Well, my final thought is like a great game. I mean, I'm very impressed with Carter Hart. I mean, the uh, announcers alluded to it as well throughout the night. Is when you're in your first playoff game like that, you're expecting a young guy like that to kind of eventually break down and make some type of young rookie mistake or something like that. And as the game went on, he did the opposite. It seemed like he just got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And they even mentioned it when they pull pull Price at the end and get that extra man there. It's like, okay, is this where he might break down or whatever? And no, he just looks stronger than ever. And I know the one he well, – let's be honest, he kind of got beat on a little bit and hit the post and uh, ended up missing. But in the end, he, I mean, he stayed there tough as anything, and, and he, he looked unbeatable tonight. I mean, it's, it's – it's, Something like that, he just looked unbeatable outside of a mistake where he kind of got caught in another Flyers defenseman, which allowed the goal. So, just I'm excited. I mean, this this Flyers team is should really give Philadelphia hope because I mean we haven't had this in a very long time, and I, I think this team's got a real shot. But that, that's all I got. I completely agree. I think uh, it's going to be interesting. Ghost played a great game, but because Weber still played very well. And so did their bigger guys like Sherratt. It's going to be interesting what we do next game with Hag or not because of maybe wanting to match up with the bigger defensemen a little bit better. So that's definitely still going to be interesting to watch, even though Ghost had a solid game. And also, I mean, I think I think Ghost would be the only guy to be pulled because... Well, I was going to say, sorry to interrupt you, I was going to say, what about Braun? He, he had yep. the... He had the least amount of total ice time tonight out of the defenseman. Uh, he did have three blocks, though, but I feel like it all depends on what he wants because I feel like Osper gives you a better advantage offensively and defensively, while Braun yeah. might be the better full-on defenseman. So it might be, it might be more you what You would have to do. put Ghost with Hag then, though, and you would have to see how much you like that. I don't know if they've done that much in practice or not. I haven't paid attention much to that. Uh, 
but you would have to put him with Hag and then see how that goes. If that works, though, and those two are fine with playing with each other, then I'm perfectly fine with that because that adds a guy that's more comfortable staying back and is more of a bigger body that uses body defenseman with a guy that likes moving on the rush. So, Absolutely. And that will lead to the, the final question of the night before we wrap this up. Uh, I guess two. Are you predicting a win Friday afternoon, one? And two, what spot – either area or player, whichever one you want to pick, would you want to see the most improvement that from tonight's game to lead to that win? Um, I would say probably, I mean, Drew got the assist on the power play, but on more on five on five play, I would like to see him to improve. Uh, we talked about before how the first line hasn't looked amazing uh, compared to the other lines on the ice. Um, where I think G needs to show a little bit more, but I also think that's going to happen because he's Claude Giroux and normally something clicks eventually and we're also winning. So when you have momentum going, that's going to click eventually for him. And I think it'll happen next game. So I think he'll be one of the key factors. Obviously, Hart's a key factor. But in terms of my player of the game next game, I think it's going to be fair, but I think he's going to have a very good game after scoring this goal today. Uh and just keep rocking on and we're going to win that game. And I think this game really built momentum because we know we did not play a great 60 minutes. We just played a great two, well, two periods for the most part. Um, And then, so that's going to be a good momentum builder being able to win this game. Okay. I absolutely agree. I'm going to have us go two and zero as well in this series. Um, I'll give you a a four to, I'm going to go four to one win on Friday afternoon. But if you don't have anything else, that's going to wrap up this post-game episode of a fantastic 2-1 to Flyers victory over the Canadians here on Wednesday night in Game 1 of the first round of the 16 playoff teams. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us tonight. As Joe mentioned before in the show, if you like our work, please comment on this. Please like it and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but thank you very much. Have a great night and look forward to talking to you guys Friday night or Friday evening, I guess, after an afternoon game. Yeah. Uh, but for, for Joe and I and another episode of The Grittiest Take, have a great night.